you know, and later on, you know, when the wizard is is, is with the party, you know, that's a whole other other thing. But before we get there, you guys have to rescue her, which is this and the you know the next session, uh, the next episode, uh, what the gang discovers zombie bowling. So you set it up at the end of that first session. And of that, the, the rescue from the rotting steps. And then we had the clothes. And, and had to wait a week. <laughs> and then you waited a week <laughs> to watch it happen. Fired the rope, handed it to the tiger guy, and had to wait seven days for him to pull off on it. <laughs> and watch the zombie avalanche. Just put the, put the... <laughs> then, they then started inspiring the group. It's like, hang on a minute. It stands like, wham! <laughs> like, hey, this is a much more efficient way to do this. Clearly, the brains of the operation click clack. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, I might be the strategist of the three. <laughs> I mean, you so might be, and we should probably give you some way to talk to us at a distance. You guys got have those earrings now that you that again I stole straight from Critical Role. Thanks, Matt Mercer. <laughs> But those that's been a like a communication tool has been a thing that I've used in games from way back there. My very first D D group had like a a, a, a a compact mirror that was a two way communicator. Yeah, the the little Deus Ex Machina earrings. Right. Right. Because sometimes as a GM it's it's interesting to see information compartmentalized like that. Um, you know, like it, but at a certain point, it, it makes it hard to move a storyline forward. Yeah. Uh, so I so the the other part of this whole encounter was your first brush up against something that shaped like a beholder. Uh, the the be I mean, beholder zombie, zombie beholder. <laughs> Great, straight out of the book. This is not my fault. I didn't make that. Blame Matt Merles or Mike Merles. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he had a hand in that. Because uh, <laughs> an actual beholder would have just murdered you. Like you, you that, <laughs> if, if it had full control of all of its eye stops and really wanted you dead, it's like zorch, 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 zorch. Sorry about your saves. Goodbye. But a zombie beholder was right in your strike zone, and it was the perfect kind of tie it, it it really pulled the whole room together like it uh <laughs> yeah. because it, it's what would could have been chasing the wizard to have dealt these injuries but it takes a long time to get there i mean the fly speed on that is like 20 feet at a time so so it has the long you know the the, the looming foreshadowing ominous approach while you guys can still be be you know, doing stuff and setting up a fight. And then when the actual fight happened, it got hairy, but you guys handled it. It was fine. We we shit ourselves for about five minutes and then we killed it. Right. Yeah. right. Once you actually engaged and realized, like, oh, this isn't so bad. Oh, it's not so bad. Oh, it's a little bad. <laughs> <laughs> and we did save the, uh, what turned out to be a dark wizard. That right. was injured. I right. keep forgetting her. Wait, you know what? I wrote down her name. I know I did. Sangrid. Uh, that was that was easier. Sangrid Elves Witch. You can't say Sangrid without me hearing Sanguine, my brother. I know. Okay. <laughs> that, uh, maybe, that's both maybe, exciting and terrifying. You jerk. Maybe if her name is meant to evoke such. <laughs> But she, you know, I the 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 dark wizard archetype in my world is very like again. I stole straight out of Dragonlance. Three towers, white, red, black. Good guys, bad guys, mediators. That's that's what we got. Like evil people are drawn to the black tower because it gives them an outlet to do pain and damage, and they do. They do things like hunt renegade wizards, which is what you guys are about to get sucked into. And it's not like there's a lack of moral questioning or trying to figure out where one is ethically within the Dragonlance universe. I just, like, for anyone who's viewing this, go read Dragon's Bottom Twilight. 
and then keep reading. Maybe I'll take a picture of my bookshelf for you. And and in uh, in world, I mean, the hat only needs to have detect good and evil for for to put be put it on their head. It's like, oh, you go over to this house, Hogswort, <laughs> uh, or uh, what? not Hogs, Gryffindor, Gryffindor, or the Slytherin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and people can change. People move between towers. You know, if 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 that comes up as a storyline, we we end up exploring. If you, I don't know, go through NPCs and and there's an interest, or if a new player shows up and we have a wizard, uh, then we'll get more into that. But those politics haven't really come into play. <laughs> it has to be interesting a little bit for you having a bard in this magical landscape that is that three towers, three moons sort of thing where bards don't have an allegiance necessarily. <laughs> or the allegiance is to the muse, or whatever. Or whatever. Yes. And it's, uh, again, because I love bards, I, I, there is, like, there's a specific place in my world carved out for them. You know, they, they end up being the journalists and the, the reporters and the, uh, the town criers, as well as the novelists and the you know, they serve a social function as well. Plus spies, lots of spies. Uh, and and then I show up like, let me tell you a story about a zombie beholder and a were-tiger and a guy riding a crab. <laughs> right? Oh, it was it was last session, but this is this is another session where it really came up. Like, it turns out that friend you made is a were-tiger. Because uh, why the hell not? <laughs> I Which, think you're a little, little shark jumping there, like were-tiger? Where? No. <laughs> well, honestly, I picked Were Tiger largely because it was either that or Were Bear or Evil, and I was gonna go with not Evil, so it would be cool to work with. Uh, so Were Tiger went neutral, so I developed in that way. Since then, by the way, like in in the downtime of game, I've spent a lot of time just like geeking out on his backstory and character traits and all that because as I understand somebody's getting a little a little crushy on him so I have a feeling he's going to be sticking around but in my GM tradition like when the players pay attention to something it comes into more clear focus <laughs> he has a theme I'm right. song I'm alright with us paying more greater attention I'm alright with the me having paid attention means we have a second take sometimes <laughs> yep. As a squishy, I'm okay with this. <laughs> right, an off tank. Uh, yeah, barbarians, good times. Uh, but yeah, I have I have a whole backstory for you to discover of him. Uh, is he's got a theme song, "Run Boy Run" from from Vord Kid. Uh, it's a delightful song. Want to look it up sometime? Check it out. So that brings us almost to current, uh, because so at the end of this episode, you you once again brush it against something a little deeper in the voice. You you find someone who is speaking as the voice, like seems capitalized, and everybody seems to acknowledge it. And, and I I like that that was weird and mysterious, and like it just. You know, it was just what was happening, but at the same time, you as the characters were like, I gotta roll with this, but I got, what the hell? <laughs> what does that even mean? But you also made her, like, the most, like, like, this, like, loving, mothery, like, squishy, lovey figure at the same time. Almost. Like, well, some larger, or so, some, some... Something decided that that was exactly the right thing that was needed at the time. Yeah, Almost and that, like that that was the perfect. <laughs> well, it's hard to tell if that is GM machinations or GM machinations. <laughs> the answer is always yes to both. <laughs> no, only one of them. I look forward to you guys. If, if, if it seems like it's interesting and and I know what's up with the voice, I look forward to you guys exploring some of that. If that's what you do, because I 
every city district has some interesting weird shit going on to it. You, you found out a little bit about like a little, little bit deeper about what's going on in the library, about what is the library. The same thing about like, what is the voice? You've had a glimpse now of like, there's something, what the hell? <laughs> this episode is um, after we rescued the wizard is also where we did the new downtime rules for the first time. Yeah. That was uh, the next the next episode. Yes, oh, this was the, the game yeah. discovered zombie bowling. Uh, and you escort the, uh, the wizard back into the library district where you also noticed, just to, to refresh your memory as we get into game, like the a lot, a noticeably larger presence of of guard forces, uh, and that whole whispering of inquisition. Um, you know, you got you guys get hassled like you're like you're you know Middle Eastern in an airport. It's uh, not pleasant. Uh, in, with a medical emergency, <laughs> like you're carrying a, a wizard without limbs, and they're like, "Got to see your papers." You, you're not from around here. You need to ask some more questions. But like, God damn it! It was an unnecessary pain, and and I think that we figured, at least I figured that she was going to just sort of carry us through because I guess the other association in my head is a black wizard has power particularly usually some sort of political power and it made sense that she would be a political something yep but one thing you've you've discovered in the city and one thing that's been a running theme is the only way this level of of security intrusion would ever ever pull off with a populace is if the guards were absolutely incorruptible almost like they had to be their own church to a god of justice <laughs> That's the only way it could fly, and and this was an example of that. Like, nope. Like, get, getting into a district where she has power, it's you know coming from the voice. Everybody gets checked. Uh, yeah, this is this is this is where all the ne'er do wells are. This is where all the trouble comes from. All the poor folk. Part of me feels like it's like it's like they know something that we or the people directing them know something we don't. Hmm. Well, maybe the voice idea will infect the rest of it and it'll all be. It's also a direct consequence of Stan early on going off and, and kind of like early fire it off like alarm bells to the bastion. This is a direct reaction, like the, the tightening of, of that security is because some paladin was like, we got to clamp down on this shit. You're right, sir. Let's do that. <laughs> we'll start in the problem <laughs> district that we've always had issues with. <laughs> Not so what I meant. Oh, well. Unintended consequences. What? 